Welcome back to Panoy Crossover. So let's talk about the highlights in the NBA. Marky Mark, what has gone down and what are the issues in the NBA? Well, let's go straight up to, I guess, you know, the highlight of uh, today, which is just the trade, uh, the trade deadline that just happened. Uh, let's go straight up. Before that, let's go with the very first trade, that the big blockbuster trade that happened mm -hmm. before the actual deadline, which was Blake Griffin's trade to the Clipper, uh, from the Clippers to the Detroit. Uh, what are you guys' thoughts about, you know, so far, how does it work so far for Detroit, and how does it work for the, the Clippers? I think, I think with the Pistons, we don't, we never, I, in my opinion, I didn't think it was going to work out, but so far, it's working out. They've won five straight, I believe, with Blake Griffin on the floor, mm -hmm. and they're actually gelling together. Andre, jo Andre Drummond is working well, actually still being able to be a dominant force within the paint, while Blake Griffin is also helping out, whether it be doing some jump shots or pushing up the ball, and then having Andre Drummond in the middle. So what a lot of people are still saying that Blake Griffin and Andre Drummond together are, is, 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 is like an Eastern team of Blake Griffin and DeAndre Jordan, mm -hmm. but just a, a slight difference here and there. So the Pistons, it, it looks promising. On paper, it did, and it looks like it, it might uh, make out to be a good good deal. Uh, Pistons right now, they're probably tied within the, around the 7 to 8, 9 seed, so they could probably bump up into that later half of the top seeds for the playoffs, but they still got a lot of work to do because they're just right there on the ninth seed, right behind the 76ers and the Miami Heat. Mm. And I think I think it's that, that, that playoff push that they wanted. Mm -hmm. Jeff Van Gundy did want to, because and, and the end, the stretch of the game when it comes down to like giving the ball to someone that you trust or someone that you know can be the go-to scorer. I think Blake Griffin can be that go-to scorer. They gave up, what, Tobias Harris and Avery Bradley, mm -hmm. but compared to Griffin, who can, like, bully ball down low, mm -hmm. and, you know, when he, when he gets going, we've seen him make some buzzer beater shots mm -hmm. in, in, you know, Clippers, and uh, so I think it's about getting that playoff push, and I think it's working out so far. I don't know about the momentum. -wise. I don't know if Blake Griffin can continuously carry mm -hmm. them for, I don't know, Five zero. I don't know how long. He's been known to be injury prone. That's one Absolutely. of the risks and, that he came with. And giving up two players for one player, and especially mm -hmm. Blake Griffin, were to go down one more time. Um, I'm not sure, but what, what are your thoughts about Blake Griffin's, Griffin's play I think Detroit? This, this just comes down to, uh, if you look through the past few years of what Detroit has been made of, um, they, if, if you really look down in, 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 in terms of the players that they've really acquired, they've never really been able to attract a big name player in through free yeah. agency. Mm -hmm. like if you know, try to look back at the D, at, at a player's name that you felt like was a big name that was signed by Detroit. I, I can't think of any. They've been building through drafts or through trades. Like yeah. the last person that you know they've been acquired that was a big name really probably was Rasheed Wallace, and that was when they were big. Yeah. Uh, they were you know the contenders. Uh, there was contenders. I was in like 2005 era. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. it's been a really long time since, and, and they really struggled acquiring big name players. So and I understand where um, yeah, where Stan Van Dundee, um was coming, you yeah. know, where his view is coming from. He's saying this is a once of a lifetime for a, a place like Detroit to to be able to get an opportunity to land a player like uh, like Blake Griffin. Mm -hmm. He might not be a superstar, like he might not be like you know a, a franchise changing player, but he's big enough of a name to attract. You know, they just got a new arena, uh, and and they wanted to see if they can make a playoff push but also to increase attendance because they wanted the worst in the league in terms of attendance. And to have a name, someone like Blake, who's been, you know, a very popular name. In, in, he's been in Hollywood commercials. <laughs> so he's been, he's, he's yeah. a name. He's, he's, no, it's not just the... the Jumping the, over Kia. It's, it's not just the name that comes into it. It's yeah. not just a ball. Uh, he can obviously ball. It's not just that. His ability to play ball, but it's also his name comes into play. His brand. And, his and, brand. brand. and it's working, exactly. too, because apparently, I know I saw an article saying that, like, his jersey is sold out in Detroit. Mm -hmm. So everyone's jumping on, you know, mm -hmm. taking him taking being the face. Exactly. So now, this was so. this was a multiple multiple moves in terms of you know what Sam and Daddy was trying to do, mm -hmm. and it's also it helps secure his job. Not the fact that he's able to land a, a player like Blake. Or if you notice now, in to, even through the trade deadline, he was the bigger he was the bigger acquisition out of any really every single person that was mm -hmm. traded. All right. But in, ter in terms of, uh, touch upon, like, I guess, the Clippers side. So mm -hmm. what, what, what does the Clippers affect of Blake leaving? Like, mm -hmm. what does that, I, I'm not sure 
I, I, I think they were just trying to figure out really. Um, uh, it was kind of low move for them to do it without letting him know. Whereas yeah. they signed him for a very long term, saying you are going to be a Clipper for life. You know, oh they kind of gave him. They gave, they gave him all <laughs> that, that you know acclimate. Clip. They gave him all this like you yeah. know uh, this positive thing, saying that you are going to be Clipper for life. And he he put Clippers on the map. It's been a very long time since Clipper was a uh, important yeah. at all. Since like not really since maybe Lamar Odom days. He wasn't even as good. You know, they weren't even that good back then. Or Baron Davis back then. They weren't that good until like you know Blake Griffin came in and that's really what attracted Chris Paul into yeah. to the Lob for, City. Yeah. He was hoping for uh, to stay with Clippers for a long time mm-hmm. to follow what Demar Rosen is, is potentially doing mm-hmm. and what Kobe Bryant has done uh, during the, the free agency uh, just a year ago when Blake Griffin was was about to resign with the Clippers. They had a mock jersey retirement in LA Staples, Staples Arena. Mm. So they actually they had they had a mock jersey retirement. So they actually had his, his name Griffin. Yes, and retired the first retired Clippers jersey. Raised, <laughs> re, actually, raised to the Raptors. They had a choir. Yeah, and you know have a, have a good ceremony, mock ceremony, and it's, it's, it's just it's just the fact that they went all out just to bring him in, mm-hmm. and then, and then later on they trade him away. So it's 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 weird what transpired. But who knows what's going in the locker room? Because Matt Barnes came out on Instagram saying that the players they're not having problems. It's Doc Rivers who came in and is now coaching the team. Mm. Who, who is the problem? But who knows? Things can change later on. Uh, I don't know if they're going to be re- rebuilding. They just signed a, a, an extension for Lou Williams. Congrats to him. Mm. And DeAndre Jordan, he didn't get moved. So. We'll we'll have to see what happens with the Clippers because I don't think they're actually gonna they're not gonna make a good playoff run with a mm. stacked Western Conference. Yeah. So they're gonna be in that middle rebuild. What they say a rebuild, but we're still trying to make a push. But it doesn't doesn't seem that way. Mm. I do understand that they're not gonna get far in the playoffs, but I think what they've got right now is not bad still in terms of you know uh, because they still need to make you know they still need to make ticket sales. They still need to sell out arenas, their their the games and stuff. So I think what they have right now is still, you know, it, it's still playable. And with, the, you know, a lot of people getting injured now in this season, this very injury plague season. Yeah. Mm-hmm. They have a possibility <laughs> to get really, you know, it just takes one injury to, to really yeah. get in there. And, and for them, they have a pretty, if you really look at them, if they're healthy, they're not a bad squad because Patrick Beverly could come back yeah. for mm-hmm. the playoffs. So yeah. they have a guys like, you know, Milos. This has been really good so far for them as the point guard, and they, they, you know, they didn't get, they didn't trade Avery Bradley, so Avery Bradley gets to stay and be that two way, two way guard, and then they have Gallo who just came back from his injury. He's not a bad, you know, scorer, and they have Tobias Harris who can play that four, and then DeAndre Jordan can be that. So mm. there's still a pretty good bunch of team, and now, you know, with, with with without Blake, they're gonna have to make up for a lot of the things that he was able to do for them. But then also they they have they added you know a two way player in everybody like I mentioned and Tobias Harris is not a bad player he's mm-hmm. he's a he's a pretty he was playing really well for them yeah. for uh, Detroit before he was traded so I think they have a, you know they have a pretty good chance to make it mm-hmm. you know and and also this takes out a, a chunk of money from from LA Clippers in terms mm-hmm. of what they have to pay Blake for the next mm-hmm. for how much they signed him for how many years right so I feel like with how much, how long they signed him for. Maybe it was a desperation move because of what they were witness experience from Chris Paul. So, you know, they didn't give him that, ex- and he um, basically left for nothing. They got nothing back from Chris Paul because yeah. of what he decided to do. Mm-hmm. And if we, they felt like this was a def- desperate move, they needed to sign somebody, or else they're going to lose them for nothing. And this was what they did to Blake, right? Mm-hmm. I, I feel like there's a conspiracy on that because of the fact that <laughs> they, uh, he, didn't, he, didn't get, he didn't get a trade, a no trade clause. He could have gotten it. Mm-hmm. He got a guy a no trade clause saying, you know, where it could have been a messy situation like what happened with Carmelo because of the uh, no trade clause. So he didn't get that, but he got, you know. A, a uh, big chunk of contract, and because he didn't have a tr- no trade clause, they were able to do whatever they wanted, right? So that's what I feel, what I saw, really, what happened with the Clippers. I think speaking on the no trade clause, that's mm-hmm. what free agents later on are going to worry about, mm-hmm. whether they'll have a f- no trade clause in their contract, or even just forget about it. Mm-hmm. But it's a, it's it's one of those situations that uh, any team, of course, NBA is a business. Any mm-hmm. team can trade you or not re-sign you. And 
for Blake Griffin, they, he who was hoping to stay there for a long time, retire as a Clipper, mm -hmm. not 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 because of the mock jersey retirement, but like himself, he was hoping really really hoping to stay with the Clippers and make a make a change for them. But it, it, it's sad to see that like the loyalty was like. Out yeah. the door. There is no loyalty <laughs> now in the no NBA. That goes, just goes to show you can sign for multiple years, multiple yep. dollars, multiple mm. millions of dollars, and still get traded. Mm. That's just on that show. note. I remember seeing uh, Instagram post. Uh, Channing Fry says, "Hey, there's no loyalty. It's just all business." 